yeah, right. I think this this is a, a product that we've seen analogous versions of it during past cycles, but it's a more advanced version. And if I'm right, I think that it sort of marks the start of a real DeFi season on Slate. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our inaugural podcast of Midcurve, the podcast powered by Gito, I guess. Um, I have today with me my co-host, the esteemed Andrew. If you could introduce yourself, sir, and give us a little bit of background, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks, Justin. Um, so I am, uh, along with you, one of the two new employees of the Gito Foundation. Um, formerly did a lot of work uh, all over the place, over at Nonsen some reporting, um, and am a recent uh, a new inductee of the Cult of Solana uh, by virtue of our uh, Gigabrain uh, bosses and overlords. How, how, actually that's, I didn't know that. How new are you to Solana? Um, uh, relatively. Honestly, uh, I was ready to put like dirt on the face of the entire ecosystem, right? Um, price was eight bucks. It had just blown up and I never really understood it. Um, you know, uh, it just seemed like a lot of Fugazi to me, um, like stuff like CRM governance, I got lightly involved in and it was just obviously corrupt. Um, but then in the heart of the bear, talk to Brian and Lucas, uh, Buffalo, um, guys over at, uh, Gito labs. And, um, it, it, it just blew me away. They, they brain mocked me. It was like I was getting intellectually bullied and I immediately went and bought a Solana bag and have been getting deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole ever since. Nice, nice. So how far are you down the rabbit hole at this point? I mean, I can understand half of what Mert's saying. Like, okay. Yeah. And, but, but the real question is, do you own a bag of whiff? That's, that's <laughs> right. a true metric. I don't think, I don't have much whiff. I do have some whiff. Uh, the one that cracked me up, I didn't claim my my when. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's like uh, 70 bucks now or something. And it's, no, it's it, like, it was over 100 it was over a hundred. Oh, wow. Well, there, there it is. Keep... Like I, I, I was like too busy and I left the money on the floor. Like that's how crazy it's getting in Solana land that it was like, I, I couldn't even be bothered to, to get some free money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that happens. I've, I've definitely missed out on a few airdrops just because of, you know, pure laziness, no excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you can't keep up with everything. You can't keep up with everything in this industry. It moves so quickly. So it's it's quite quite difficult. But um, I guess I, I, I'll give you a little bit of background for the viewers at home. Um, unlike unlike you, Andrew, I have been in Solana from day one. Uh, long and storied past uh, with crypto. I, I got into crypto in 2014, um, but full-time in 2017. And yeah, anyway, I was working for some people in Hong Kong and Taipei who were the first investors or one of the first into Solana. And that was my initial, you know, uh, baptism, I guess. I remember for, actually- For the folks at home, by the way, that's a quintessential Justin story to the extent that he's always like, yeah, I was with a billionaire in Dubai. And it's like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced he's not a CIA plant, <laughs> but- I have, I have lived a very interesting and I guess random life, uh, but that was always the goal. And it's, it's turned out to be really fun, but yeah, I do have a lot of stories, which I'm sure will come out as we like find, you know, find guests to come on the podcast. Uh, but yeah, I remember being with these people in Berlin. We were at a, um, we were at a, what was it? It was a lightning conference in Berlin. And I remember getting in the Uber and one of them telling me, Hey, I met this guy totally, you know, I think we're, we're, we're going to invest in what he's doing. He's building this new blockchain. And of course, I was like, okay, well, these these guys are obviously, they know way more than I do. They're way smarter than I am. So they must know something. So I went home and I, you know, immediately when I got home, looked up Solana, started, you know, what, when, once the token came out, I started buying it. It wasn't even out yet. The chain wasn't even live yet. But I remember listening to the first podcast with Anatoly, the first Solana podcast. And I was like walking around my neighborhood and they were, I was also into cycling and they were talking about cycling and there was like, there was a big cycling culture in Solana at the time. I was like, these, these are my people, these are my people. So I, I immediately got into it and that was, yeah, it, it was fun. That might be the heart of uh, what we're doing at mid curve too. We, we yeah. just took the advice of people smarter than us and went with it. Yeah, like... exactly, exactly, exactly. So let's talk about mid curve, I guess. 
let's give a brief um, overview of what we want this podcast to be. Uh, and for, for me, um, I really want this to be a cultural podcast. I don't want to dive too far into like the technical aspect for one, because it's, I'm a, I'm a mid curve. It's over my head. You're not, you understand that stuff. That's why you're here. So you can explain to us mid curves, <laughs> what, you know, what all this means. If we do happen to wander into the deep pit accidentally. Um, but, but for me, I'm interested in a few things. And the thing that's kept me in, in crypto all these years is like the people that some of the, you, you know, you meet some of the most interesting people, um, in this industry. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with their stories. I like, how do they get here? Why are they doing this? Why do they continue to do this? Um, and what is it like, what does it take to build these communities and these like, you know, micro cults within the cult of crypto, you know, that to me is fascinating. So I think that's kind of where I want to push this podcast. I want to bring on interesting guests. I want to bring on people that, you know, you wouldn't normally talk to because, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to meet some some people who move behind the scenes in crypto and have for years and you don't know who they are, but, um, but they've done, they've moved and built markets. Right. And it's, um, and so I want to get some of those people on, on the podcast to talk to them about the early days of like building all this stuff. I think that would be really, really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on like where you would like to see this go. No, I, I think we're aligned on that. Um, I, I, I also think that just when you look at the sort of market of uh, content on Solana, it is just so rich at the far end of the IQ curve, right? <laughs> you, you're just like every podcast is talking with a, a, a literal and genuine genius, right? And um, I think uh, um, work focused on uncovering the people's stories because Solana really is concentrated. You know, they... One of the things that stood out to me first getting into it was that um, it almost has an entirely different vocabulary relative to Ethereum. The way people think about, conceptualize, and approach the problems that blockchain is solving, um, it attracts a different kind of person. And getting to know that person a little bit more, aside from hearing them talk about you know entirely inscrutable topics that I faintly think will help me make money, um, you know that uh, uh, I think I think there's something there, and there's um, uh, uh, a lot of really interesting folks behind the scenes. I think we should jump into the next topic, which is you know current events, what's happening on Solana today, and what's interesting. What are you seeing? I mean, uh, everybody in the world is prepping for the Jupiter airdrop tomorrow. I think um, it's it's just such an exciting season right now. You have all these new assets that are coming out, and um, they just immediately run. You know, yeah. there was uh, Alt Layer last week that was one to um eigenlayer restakers and some like early nft buyers um and it had a kind of skewed distribution but it still went ballistic and you know you look at jupiter i think they're a fascinating project right um their ui ux is really slick um it just reminds me of an early day uniswap you know the the um uh, limit orders and the, you know, scheduled buys and scheduled sells. And it just works intuitively. Um, really, really good and really interesting product. And um, I think everybody's sort of excited to see not just what Jupe itself will do, but the kind of impact it's going to have on everything else, right? Yeah. Is this going to be another wealth creation event that really sends shit coins going ballistic? Um mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where everybody's sort of waiting and seeing. It's a very exciting time right now. So something else that we're both excited about is this new pool that's coming out on Meteora. Um, it's it's a unique, it's a new and unique product. Um, and it's kind of stacked with a few other things, right? Uh, but I will let you explain it because I know you're excited about it and I know you have an interesting thesis around it. So, Yeah, I think this, this is a, a product that we've seen analogous versions of it during past cycles, but it's a more advanced version. And if I'm right, I think that it sort of marks the start of a real DeFi season on Solana. Um, so at the top layer is a Camino vault, but let's like start from the bottom and work our way up there. Uh, at the base, you have the liquidity pair. It's gonna be a uh, Jupe, the newly launched governance token of this super exciting new deck suite and aggregator, and uh, Jito Soul, 
the next gen LST that delivers and democratizes MEV rewards to stakers. Um, those assets are going to be paired in a new type of liquidity pool for Meteora, which will let users earn a um, points reward multiplier for Meteora. But then on top of Meteora, you also have the auto compounding Camino Vault, which will serve as a decentralized market maker for the pool. Um, but you're earning Camino points multipliers uh, for depositing into that vault as well. Um, but finally, uh, Gito is also incentivizing both the Meteora pool and the Camino vault uh, with uh, JTO tokens. So, you know, across these three layers, you're getting exposure to Gito soul staking rewards. Uh, the Jupiter token itself, this exciting new product, you know, um, uh, uh, from this exciting young team, um, you're getting Camino points and you're getting Meteora points and uh, JTO incentives. Um, so these are all new or emerging assets from the young teams really at the forefront of Solana's renaissance and development right now. And um, they're all kind of combined for this one highly complex, highly uh, capital efficient and highly rewarding uh, derivative position. Um that's that's really fun. Like that's you know again somewhat complex, but it sounds like 2020. That felt like it was the last time we were sort of wrapping and unwrapping these new assets, doing new things with them, zapping around, zapping them around, um, and doing fun new things with fun new products. Yeah. Um, but at every point in this particular stack, um, the LST, the Dex itself, the Vault, it's a more advanced product on. I'd argue the most advanced market leading chain. Um, to me, that's a, a blinking neon sign that says, you know, this is the start of Solana summer. Well, I hope so. Um, yeah. But we'll find a way to okay. fumble it. But we'll, we'll find, yeah, exactly. We'll find a way to mid curve it. But speaking of mid curve, let's actually. T I'm, I'm thinking we should take a step back and actually just describe this for the mid curve, like myself, um, because it, it does sound very complex. But in practice, it's not actually that complex to use, right? Like, if if we're gonna, you, you describe this like complex de derivative product or tech stack. Um, but for the user, the only thing you really need to do, um, if you wanted to, so like for myself, what I did was I went to Camino and I deposited um, both my Jupe, or I will go to Camino, I'll deposit my Jupe and my Jute of Salt, right? And when I do that, um, now I'm earning Camino points. And I'm also earning uh, JTO re rewards, right? So right yeah. there, I'm earning two things. Now, Camino is going to take my deposit, and it's going to, it's built on top of and will use the Meteora pool. Uh, is that correct? The new DLMM pools, right? That's exactly right. And so I think that's also a big upgrade from the 2020 cycle, right? The Solana UI UX is really you click a couple buttons. But you're in fact interacting with multiple products and um, uh, uh, you know multiple assets and also multiple um, decentralized protocols at the same time, which is That's pretty right. exciting. That's right. So because it's using that pool, I'm also now earning uh, Meteora points. Correct. That's so right. so right there, you're earning a few like like you described. You're earning points from essentially three different different products. Uh, or you're earning rewards, I should say, from three different products. But like I said at the beginning, the only thing you're really interacting with, if you were to do it this way, and the only thing that I'm interacting with is Camino itself, right? It was as simple as just depositing my Judasol and my Jupe in this pool um, or in this market maker on Camino. That's it. Yeah, it's that's the magic of interoperability, right? And that that's really exciting to me. Yes. So what you're telling me is generational wealth is on the table here. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, I mean, I'm going to find a way to fumble it, but maybe for somebody else. Same. 100% same. Yeah, I've I've round tripped so many uh, good, good trades in my life. Uh, I don't even like to think about it. But, but yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I feel like this is a really exciting time. Like you said, I feel like we're on the precipice of, of something really fun. Um and at the end of the day, like, I don't know. I think that's what keeps me coming back to crypto is like, yeah. one, there's opportunity, but two, it's just really fun. Like after you're in crypto for so long, you just can't work anywhere else because you go to an office or whatever. They don't get the jokes. 
They don't get the memes. They don't understand the chaos that we all, you know, thrive in. And just like the, 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 I mean, there's a case to be made that I shouldn't have access to this stuff, but the idea that like this, this vault product that's launching tomorrow, um, I'm going to have three different development teams incentivizing me yeah. for acting as a market maker in this interoperable tech stack that allows me to create, uh, again, a very complex derivative position that's potentially very lucrative. I, yeah. in no universe would I know how to do that or do anything analogous sure. to that. Terrifying. There's just no, there's no way. Um, yeah. It's it's remarkable to me. Yeah, we're we're we're, well, not we're a, doing wizardry every fucking day, you know. And not only that, but like in TradFi, no one would want you to have the um, the ability to do this yeah. either. Yeah. They they're not going to give you the ability to create a drill disposition. I mean, it's hard enough for people to just trade futures in um, traditional finance. I mean, I came from traditional finance, um, and it's like the the stuff that. And and this is uh, like going back to like my beginning is like this is the ideology that brought me into crypto in the first place. You know, it's like free and open system, tr uh, free and open financial system for all type thing, right? Yeah. So like creating these complex positions and game like I don't want to say gamifying them, but making them easier to understand and with obviously you know the docs to back it up and the research to back it up, but still a little bit easier for understand to understand if you don't have a finance degree. Um, and giving the people the access to this is amazing. I it's guess. not even the access to like the the ownership angle shouldn't be overlooked as well. Like in addition right. to actually being able to build this complex financial product, um, in, in doing it in like two or three clicks too. Right? Yeah. Let's not overstate um, the kind of in addition to tech improvements, the UI UX improvements that some Solana teams have been doing recently. Yep. Um, in a couple clicks, you're able to build this financial product, and but then in the process of holding it and providing liquidity and acting as this market maker, um, you're getting ownership, future ownership and current ownership, in three different protocols. Mm -hmm. They're giving you, you know, the the right to future governance of the products that you built that you wouldn't have access to in the normal world. That's it. it it's incredible. Fundament yeah, fundamental shift in how, you know, uh, uh, participation in these types of markets operates. Um, and like, you, yeah. like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go work at PNC after, you know, doing that? It's, it's really tough to uh, uh, go back once you've gotten it, right? Indeed. Jito recently launched its uh, call for delegates. And um, there were a few people we knew would be in there and we'd hoped would be in there. And of course they sh showed up, but what was really heartening to see was just a random uh, community member. You know, this guy I met, Joe Build, uh, a couple thousand Twitter followers. He's been around Solana forever, you know, working behind the scenes and some governance stuff. And he just sort of emerged from the weeds. And so I think that's, you know, that's the type of person, like who's, who's those critters in the shadows and the uh, anime uh, avatars with way too much power. <laughs> You know, let's let's find those guys and bring them on. This is at, at the very core of mid curve. Like that's what we want it to be. We want, we want it to be a community of people who are passionate about Solana, passionate about Gito, passionate about governance, and actually, you know, helping to build this the system that we're all pushing towards. So, you know, people who are interested in in actually adding value instead of you know um, just extracting value. Yeah. Um, and just because yeah. you only understand half of what Anatoly says doesn't mean you can't participate. <laughs> exactly. That's right. You might not understand what he says, but you can definitely understand what I say. That's so right. we, we can hang out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we can, we can have a good time, but yeah, this, uh, I think, I think we can just wrap it up here on this one. Um, yeah. So this, I guess this was the first episode of Maker. 